What's going on out there? Mr. Dave here in my office up on the hill east of San Diego. And I am trying to learn all this YouTube stuff, the live stuff, and uh, figure out how to make all this kind of online things, uh, these online things work. It's pretty amazing technology, I tell you. I didn't know anything about this stuff till uh, you now. Many years ago, I think I uploaded a YouTube video like 10 or 11 years ago, um, just sort of on a whim. And, um, you know, if you take your passions and you, you put them together and you, you know, share them with folks, especially now, it's super, super easy to do. And so um, after that, I took I took the uh, things I was doing and just kept recording them. I've been a photographer for many decades, uh, way, way back in the day. I really enjoyed taking pictures of stuff. and documenting all the things I was doing. And if any of you guys have been following me, I was a dental technician basically out of high school after becoming a laborer. And I realized I don't want to be a laborer for a living. That wasn't so much fun. Um, and um, then my uncle was kind enough to offer me a, sh a shot at being a dental technician. Uh, gosh, this is, you know, I graduated in 78 from uh, <coughs> Claremont High School. Yes, that's Ridgemont High School. For those of you who at all remember that movie, that was the school that the uh, Rolling Stones, as I understand it, um, when the, some of the reporters or whatever went undercover and they went to uh, Claremont High School here in San Diego and found out uh, what it was like to be in high school back in the day, back in the late 70s. Anyway, that was Ridgemont High, the movie that uh, I went to that high school. Fun, fun, fun. I was a geeky, um, artsy fartsy ceramic stoner guy. Yeah, that's right. I, I did partake. I did inhale, I'm afraid. And, uh, that lasted for a few years. And then I realized it was actually making me dumber. So I stopped that. But anyway, he, uh, my uncle was a dentist. He offered me a chance to work in a dental lab. So I started doing dental technology and I learned by sitting next to somebody, watching what they're doing, working on their hands, making these little teeth, and all the model work that goes into that. The end of that led to uh, running into um, some sand sculptors. I got into photography while I was a dental tech. Loved taking pictures. Creative stuff was kind of my salvation, creativity. And ended up uh, being able to uh, have time over to do things. Go to the Sierras, backpacking, taking photographs. I love snow skiing. Did a lot of that. Took pictures. Everywhere I went, that was my hobby. I took pictures and stuff, which was really, really cool. Anyway, after that, I uh, saw some guys building an enormous sand sculpture, and that was the beginning of a sand sculpture career, which then I went ahead and worked at it, worked at it, and was able to turn that into a multi-million dollar grossing business after learning how to do sales and marketing a little bit, just a little bit, little baby steps. And then I came home one day, and my son was two, Daniel, and I tried to give him a hug, and he's like, no, who's that strange man? Because I'd been gone like 224 days that year. Some of you have heard this story before if you've been all following me, um, but it's amazing. I've actually been able to do things that I love to do for a living. After Daniel forgot his daddy because I was gone so much, I said, I got to do something different. So that's when I got into doing faux rock. It began as doing ponds with rubber liners and real rock. Super simple system. It is to this day. Little kits you can buy. You dig a hole, you put a rubber liner in it. Then you put real rock back on it. You just make sure the sides of the pond have an angle. The repose is such you can stack stones on it. You can even cover that up with concrete. And I've learned how to do that and uh, turn co make koi ponds, fish ponds, super easy. Anyway, that turned into faux rock eventually as I was, you know, working out how to do this sort of thing. And that also transformed into what was over the years a multi-million dollar grossing business as well. So I have been able to do what I love for a living. And I spent months and months last year, I think it was, uh, maybe leading in a little bit of this year, putting together a course on how to do that. And I'm more passionate now about sharing how to make a living doing what we love, how to do what you love instead of being in a job that's like, oh, man, it sucks. I'm just, hey, getting out of bed to go to work. You know, I got to be there at time, you know, time punch the punch clock thing and doing all that stuff. And my personality is like, no, nah, man, I like to sort of be the, the captain of my ship, the leader of my band, the author of my own book. I want to be kind of doing my own thing. And so being an entrepreneur was sort of a, a really excellent approach and sort of lined up with my personality. But it's not for everybody I get that. But 
I always tell everybody, if you have uh, uh, an eight to five or nine to five job, you're working for somebody else, no matter what you're doing, start a business on the side. Nowadays, so easy with online content creation. As uh, some of you guys have heard me ramble on about that in my other live talks here on YouTube and stuff. Um, it's it's so crazy, simple and easy. You can set up a YouTube channel for free for zero, zero nada. And you just start creating and sharing your passion. And you do it with you do it enthusiasm. You know, you share what you'd love to do with passion. People respond to that. You know, a lot of folks are sort of stuck in a ditch, stuck in a in a in a, a job that's not really taking them anywhere. I didn't quit my job, but I started learning about other options. I wanted to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. Okay, I'm still kind of trying to figure that stuff out. I'm 65, been through a whole pile of health issues, which some of you guys know, kidney transplants, dialysis. Almost died in January of last year. Had a, had a brain bleed in my head. I was on a ventilator for a couple of days. Anyway, by God's grace, I got through that. So life does, you know, do what it does, twists and turns. And, you know, sometimes you get a gut punch. What I'm here to say is, though, you can make a living doing what you love. And God put that in us, I think, to really have us to be do something that we're designed to do. Where's our passion? Where's our interests? What really floats our boat gets us excited about getting up in the morning? I remember growing up and we were going on a ski trip to Mammoth or something. I'd be like, I couldn't even sleep the night before. I was so excited. I want to go. I so enjoyed snow skiing and stuff. Motocross riding was the same kind of thing. And creativity, you can get lost for hours with creativity. Your brain can just be just cruising along, trying to figure out design concepts, questions. All about creativity is all about answering questions. Little tiny step, step questions. What color, what size, what shape, how far, how little textures, what's the subject matter. And then when you think about it in the business terms, how am I, how am I representing my client's business or service in terms of the sand sculpture stuff? That's what we did. You know, we would take a theme based on a client who's a sponsor for our projects at the fairs and stuff as an example, and we would accommodate what they're trying to say, but it was a wonderful way to show uh, their product or service in an entertaining way. And people would come back to the fairgrounds many, many times just to see the progress of our project. And these are tens and sometimes hundreds of tons of sand, some even in the thousands when we did beach, big beach projects and stuff. But Today, I wanted to talk to you on this little live sh uh, live YouTube thing about my course, You Can Make a Living Doing What You Love. I printed out the cover page. This is a, a course. It looks backward on my uh, thing there, but it says you can make a living doing what you love. That's the cover. That's a sand castle I built with 412 tons of sand. And yeah, that actually is a real sand castle. It was built at the New York State Fair. But right now, just because I'm passionate about it, I really want to share this sort of thing. It really, I, I'm so excited about helping folks and, and sharing this idea of doing what you love for a living. It's just so amazing. So it's just, uh, it's 75% off right now because I just want to get it in more, more hands, more people. Like I said, it's been months to months. There's hours of videos and they take you through both the preparation. It's built in, in terms of a pilot as far as training goes, and then flying your plane is launching into your new business. And all of it applies to existing businesses, how to build those businesses and help them to grow better, uh, more efficiently, faster. Um, where should your heart be? Where should your mind be? How do you navigate those two places? Because they sometimes seem to be in conflict. Heart wants to go this way. Our brain is saying, man, you shouldn't maybe. And uh, we don't always, don't always want to follow our hearts, uh, the emotions, as it were. Uh, but a lot of times we should, and being able to know the difference is really important. So the course includes pilot training. That's how do we, how do we prepare ourselves to get in a cockpit and take off with all the engines, full power, full blast, full power, uh, aiming to get this aircraft, this plane, our new business off the ground and up into cruising altitudes, as it were, where you don't have to have all the engines on full power. It can start to be able to run a little bit more on its own. And depending on your, your personality and how hard you want to push it and how hard you want to hit it and how disciplined you are, um, you can then maybe back off or delegate, scale things up a little bit, get some help, have someone else uh, take over the co-pilot position a little bit and uh, navigate those waters of your new business. And how am I meeting the needs of my clients or my customers? Everybody uh, likes to buy pe from people 
with the idea of things that we like, want, or need. Like, want, or need. Everything that moves in the gears of our capitalist free market system, you're, trying, you're going after things that you like, want, and need. Okay, that's sort of a basic foundational reality. And so are you, are you doing that? Are you giving your clients and your customers something that they like, want, and need? If you're an employee, are you giving your boss... And vis-a-vis -vis your boss, their clients or customers, what they like, want, and need. Are you doing it with a good spirit? Are you do you have a sense of gratitude and, and positivity as you're doing your job when you're working for someone else? you got to try to come and put your brain into that profile, that framework um, as you're doing that. And people can people are just so able, human beings are so able to look at you and how you use your face, how's your facial expressions, how are your eyes? How do you respond to other people when you're talking to them? Are you looking them in the eye? Are you downcast? Are you irritable? Are you short? Or do you have a sense of humbleness, of servant, a servant's heart, a servant's spirit? And you can even deal with difficult customers in, in a way that's professional and also uh, is the best way that you can in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. There's, sometimes it's just hard, period. But the smarter we get, the wiser we get, the more mature we get, the better able we are to both succeed in our existing jobs. We're going to be more valued. We're going to be more able to uh, move up the, the ladder and get promotions in any company. If you're doing your job right and you're listening and you're you just have a humble spirit so you can take feedback and learn. And then your potential for success and uh, new opportunities just grows and grows and grows. I have a blog about to Harrison Ford and his story is fascinating. His biography, I just little, read a little bit of on Wikipedia and it's on, uh, it's a blog I wrote in uh, my website, www.daverhenderson.com. While I was on dialysis for many months, as some of you know, uh, I had a laptop and I started writing blogs. There's just uh, things that popped into my head. One of them is how to how to make a swimming pool, uh, how to build a fake rock thing in that category, my creative expertise. But also just other things that popped into my head. And one of them was, you know, how what are the what are the ways to succeed? I can't remember the title of the blog, but it had to do with him. And he actually had a servant spirit and he was working as a if I remember the story right, he was working as a carpenter and he just volunteered to help someone. Well, it turned out to be someone in the Hollywood uh, structure that uh, saw him. And for some reason, he sort of set himself up for success is what I think the this, this essence of that blog was. Uh, someone pointed him out and he was offered a chance. He was dabbling in acting, I think. And he was offered a chance to, I think it was Star Wars, but I think it was the first one. Um, I believe, or Indiana Jones, one of those. You guys know the correct story. You can Google it and, and uh, stuff. But fascinating story it's like how do we set ourselves up for success well we have if we have a better attitude and we're listening to people that know how to do that we're not just listening to, to the voices both in our heads and around us the people around us that are pulling us back tearing us down telling us you can't what are you crazy you can start your own business you know that's that's nuts you know you hear the, the classic story of colonel sanders you know didn't start kentucky fried chicken until he was 55 or whatever he was so <clears throat> pretty amazing um, how these stories, these true stories of people that have achieved and succeeded in spite of all the odds and stuff. Uh, one fact of reality is life is super hard sometimes. I mean, brutal and uh, unforgiving. And that's just the reality of our journeys. We can't escape it. None of us does. Um, but um, I'm 65 and I've been through enough, enough stuff to know that you still have you know, you still can overcome things and you can move past the tragedies, the dramas and traumas of life and succeed. And um, so I, you know, anyway, I'm really excited about this topic. As I hope you can tell, I really want to get as many people moving in a direction that's giving them more sense of peace. Uh, the fruit of the spirit, as the Bible talks about love, hope, uh, long suffering and um, and that sort of thing, and um, ha ends up with folks being better people. And one by one, we can make the world a better place. And it's it's a challenge now because like, a lot of forces are trying to bring us down, tear us down, freak us out, scare the death out of us. And so it's it's great to to at least have a framework. And my little my little book, and it's, there's a book that that is a part of this stuff too. Um, you can make a living doing what you love. 
And I would encourage you guys to grab this thing. Like I said, this little shameless plug, 60 bucks. It's regular 240. And uh, I just want to get it in as many hands as I can. So uh, buy it for a friend for Christmas. You know, might be an awesome thing to give your husband, your wife, your your friend, your brother, what have you, your sister. And uh, hey, you know, I believe in you. I believe that you uh, have what it takes to be successful. And I would love to be able to support that for any and all that uh, anyway are hearing my voice right now. So Mr. Dave here doing a shameless plug for my course. You can make a living doing what you love. I think I have the correct uh, link in there. And I'm just learning how to do it all this stuff. I'm looking over and I see there's some chats going on. I can barely see them in there, but I hope I'll respond. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys on the chats here when I finish it up, when I can read them <laughs> more clearly. But anyway, God bless you guys. Thanks for checking out my stuff and my videos and all this other mumbo jumbo over the years. And uh, it's so it's such a blessing to hear good things uh, that, I'm, uh, that I'm having a good impact on the world. You know, every day I try to make people laugh or smile. It's not always easy and stuff. Um, and also on, on the topic of that, if you have chronic pain, <clears throat> I can tell you that it's so much harder to be happy and joyful in your chronic pain. My dad had it uh, and before he passed away last September. My brother still has it. He's had melanoma cancer for a decade or so. Brutal, horrible uh, journey he's been on and he has I think 10 to 20 biking in a day or something to try and manage the pain and uh, I could tell you the gruesome story there but he's still kicking and fighting and um, so I fully honor all of all of you or any of you that have struggled with chronic pain I've had months of it and it uh, is not so easy to put on a happy face and uh, those of you who do in spite of your pain God bless you I, it's it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do <clears throat> and I'm not sure I did it as good as I could have, but I'm better now, I think, I would hope anyway. But no matter what happens to you, we want to try to put a happy face on it, as I think I posted the other day, and and try and make the best of it. But I will I will definitely be real and say, you know, if you just want to be in a in a big, bad place for a moment or two and just be there, I get it. So God bless you. Hang in there. Um, each new day has the potential for... Uh, an improvement and a betterment. And sometimes those days seem to not come for a long time and it is hard. So I just want to validate you. If you or your loved one is going through that, if they're in pain be patient with them uh, because um, pain is a, is a whole nother game when it, when it won't go away, it grabs your attention and it won't let it go. It's like with both hands, it just grabs you. So God bless you guys. Anyway, for listening to me ramble on, I kind of can talk, talk and talk. So I'm a quack and duck and, uh, Grab the course if you can, 60 bucks. Like I said, the link is in the comments section, I think, on this uh, live uh, post. I've been going for 18 minutes now. That's a good little long ramble. And uh, I'm also looking to start a podcast here and a video podcast thing. I want to try to figure that out and talk on things that I think are important and maybe try to help folks and put a little positive vibe out there in the midst of a world that seems to be spinning off its axle. So anyway, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Um, we're not here by accident. You aren't. And there's a purpose that we have in our lives right now. And discovering it is an exciting adventure. Um, but it's good to step off the throne of your life and being your own God and let God be God and you just be you. Uh, be the clay and let God be the potter and mold you around. You just got to hear him. So that's something that's made a huge difference in my life, too. And I tried it both ways. And I... I recommend the latter. <laughs> Better to have God at the steering wheel of your boat, your ship, steering the bus, and you're just uh, back there supporting the, the the wherever it's going, wherever God's calling you to go. So anyway, God bless you. Jesus is coming back. I like to throw out there. Uh, get ready. Get him in your heart. He'll clean you up, and uh, he'll be able to make a way for you to be in the presence of perfection, and you cannot be unless you have been cleaned up. Jesus made a way. He definitely did. So get him in your heart. Ask him to come in, clean you up. And just, you know, we we need to apologize to ourselves. We need to apologize to God and we need to ask for his forgiveness and stuff. It's really an amazing process when you finally do it. I, I finally did it many years ago. In fact, I think I went I think I went down to the altar as the classic scenario goes. I think like three times just to make sure. <laughs> so 
I think I did the thing, and uh, but I'm not sure I'll do it a few more times. So anyway, that was my crazy story. But God has been good in my life and carried me through some brutal things. And in fact, all the hardships I've been through have made me a better person and changed my heart and made me better. So it's a weird thing. I would never want to go through it again. But I'm thankful for having been through the suffering and the misery and the months on dialysis and multiple surgeries and almost dying uh, with internal brain bleed and driving to the hospital, the ER, the emergency room with, you know, dry heaves and just feel like I want to just take me now, get me out of here, God. So miserable. But all of that stuff brought me to today. And I, I think it's been a blessing to me and it molds and shape us. You know, we're hard little nuts to crack sometimes. And it seems like God allows hard, hard stuff to happen so that we can uh, be molded and shaped. Um, I was a stubborn mule. Didn't want to, didn't want to give in to any other authority or power. It was me. It was, it was the Dave Henderson show. A friend of mine told me once, which was really painful to hear, but it was true. So anyways, um, Anyway, I go on and on. I talk too much. So there's Mr. Dave rambling on. Get the course. You can make a living doing what you love. And I just hope and pray uh, if you don't do that, you do something that's a blessing uh, to others. You're learning and growing. Learn, grow, become is one of the things, one of the phrases I like to throw out there too. So, all right. All right. All right. Thumbs up. Launching forward into the great beyond. Loving others, even when it's hard, and forgiving ourselves and others. And you give yourself a gift when you do that. You actually open up the potential for so much more awesome stuff. Holding on to grudges is just dumb, and it doesn't serve you at all. It steals your joy. I like to say, no, I don't want anything to steal my joy. Now that I'm on the other side of the hourglass, there's less sand in the top than on the bottom. Now that I am for sure at 65, pretty much. So God bless you guys again. I think I've said that five times, so I'll shut up now. Thank you for listening, any of you guys out there. I really appreciate it. And um, send me a message. Let me know any questions you have about the course. Uh, and if you do sign up for it, please communicate with me. And let me know how it's going. I want to help you out with any way I can and tell you what I've been through and what I know. And we can figure out a way and improve things um, throughout this whole process. So, all right. All right. Let me shut up now. All right, Mr. Dave signing off. Live stream promoting the course. You can make a living doing what you love. You can. And 75% off that little course. And that's enough. Okay. Have a good day no matter what. God bless you guys. Bye.